Welcome to Wake Up West Palm, where we talk all things downtown West Palm Beach, and you get to meet some of the incredible people and businesses that make up our beautiful community. Today, I'm so excited because I'm joined by Jonathan Hopkins, the Executive Director of the West Palm Beach Mobility Coalition, otherwise known as WPB Go. Jonathan, thank you so much for being here. It's great to be here, Kate. I'm so excited. So for those people that don't know, what is WPB Go? So fundamentally, like we live in a really popular community. Everybody wants to be here to visit or to live here. Um, but that the one side effect that comes from that is that traffic gets really bad and it gets really congested. So our job is to work with the community, employers, and different organizations to help reduce congestion, help so more people can come here and experience downtown West Palm Beach, visit our great local businesses, or come here for, to work every day. Awesome. Well, I'm so excited to dig into all this, but before we do, Let's hear a little bit about your background. What got you into this? Why are you excited to, to really be on this mission? <laughs> so um, notwithstanding about 10 years I spent in the Army, long before that, when I was about five years old, I wanted to be uh, have 10 kids, marry the girl across the street, <laughs> and be a city bus driver. Ten kids? Ten kids. And I would need the city bus just to transport them. <laughs> so I like nice round numbers, apparently. And so that, um, that most of that dream is not you come true. You had a dream of using public transportation when you were a little kid. Yeah, my mom took me on the bus to go everywhere because she didn't drive. And so when I grew up, like little kids, little boys especially, like love big machines, right? And so the bus was the biggest machine in my life. And I was like, oh, not only do I, it, it's better than a car, because instead of just like driving one family around, I get to take care of everybody's family. And that it was really probably representative of the communal nature of good public transit or good transportation options um, that stood like all the other, the other two dreams in that have all fallen away. I never <laughs> married the girl across the street. I'm well short of 10 kids. But I'm still working in transportation, get to ride the bus all the time. Oh my gosh, I love it. That's so awesome. How beautiful is that? So tell us a little bit about your background and some of the places that you've worked and some of the places that you've seen. Yeah. You've seen a lot of different cities yeah. using different transportation. Yeah, for sure. You know, after um, after I grew up in the Pacific Northwest, I went off in the Army for about 10 years. So I've been a bunch of different places in the world. After that, I worked at Uber, which did obviously ride sharing, was, uh, you know, kind of... A little um, success. Broke ground on that. No, but some people might have heard of it. Um, also worked at Lime, which had bike share, scooter share, and even car share for a time. Um, and it is, remains the leading company in that space of um, scooter share and, and then bike share. Uh, I, I led an organization like WPB Go in Seattle, um, the second largest of its type in the country, um, to help reduce the same challenges we have here. Popular place, a bunch of people trying to be there, but then how do you fit everybody? Yeah. Um, and then last couple of years, I spent at Brightline rolling out their first last mile mobility system and helping this beautiful, fast, high-speed train integrate into the local context so more people could access it. So, you know, really all these jobs have been about finding um, new ways or, or improving old ways or, uh, for people to have access to the things they want and the things they love. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're obviously the right man for this job. Hopefully. And <laughs> so what are some of the challenges that you're seeing? What are people coming to you with? And what do you, what do you, what are really some of the initiatives that you're working on now? So the initiatives that we're working on now mostly relate to working mostly with employers um, to help their employees because you, know, you change one employee's behavior to, to take less parking space or less driving. And you know they do that 200 and sometimes a year. You know, so we're mostly working with employers to help shift behavior where we can, so more people can fit. When you, when you drive in a car, you take up a lot of space. If you bike or ride a bus, you take up very little. And so that the more people who are like routine workers in downtown West Palm Beach that we can get to bike or walk or ride public transit, um, the more people we can fit down here. The um, and so because the limit isn't the limit on people isn't the people themselves. It's actually their cars. You know, something I think would blow most people's mind in West Palm Beach is the city of West Palm Beach, just the land, the developable land in the city of West Palm Beach is 30% larger in area than the city of Paris. So Paris has 2.1 million people in that area. We have, you know, 130,000 or so. And so, you know, I'm not saying that we should be Paris, but, um, you know, as we get denser, you have to look to places like Paris to see what they did to deal with it, right? At some point, they were smaller too. And, you know, it's, it's, it's the same answer everywhere is you help more people um, get there in a different way. And so the biggest challenge that we've seen is just access, right? Um, 
there's a lot of people who can afford to live right here in downtown West Palm. And you can see by the cost of living down here that it's very desirable. Mm -hmm. But, you know, some of the businesses in downtown that have had employees that used to be able to walk to work, now they're coming from a county away due to affordability. And, you know, this is where it goes from fun, little John, Johnny wanted to drive a city bus when he's a little kid to big policy issues of we need affordability for our county and we can't do that by just solving housing or just solving transportation. We have to do it together. If we want more housing that's, a, that's, a, that's affordable and we, that means it needs to be taller, then we have to have the modes of transportation uh, to get them around because, you know, again, cars take up a lot of the space. Mm -hmm. So the more people we can uh, reduce their need on cars, the better. And something to point out is like about uh, a few years ago, 2019, 25% of people said they wanted to get into downtown without their car. Two years later, it was 40% wanted to get to downtown without their car and 33% actually did. The gap right there is people that wanted to, but they didn't have a tool good enough to use. Like if the bus only comes every two hours, they're not going to use it. Um, but if there's a light rail train that came every seven minutes, you know, all those people are spending 20 to 70 bucks on a Brightline ticket. A lot of them would ride the train for $2 as well. Um, in so from Wellington or someplace else. How do you measure that? Because I think what's interesting is there are some cities where people like you that grew up using public transportation, you're just used to it. And then in Florida, it's so many of us are used to our cars and it is very convenient. So how do you help not only give people access, but also really encourage that kind of behavioral change? Yeah, I mean, part of it, it's, it's twofold. Um, for those who've never done it before, it's just introducing them. To it and so that's what wpbo's job is to do is support employers like we have employers with anywhere from two employees to you know a thousand you know in in our city core or, or more than a thousand and helping work with employers to uh, show their employees different ways they can do it and make it easier lower that bar for trying something for the first time you know maybe it's taking a group to some event and they like ride public transit together so they get used to it so one part is like lowering that bar to try it for the first time but the other is, you know, Florida's changing, right? Like there's people that call West Palm Wall Street South and they're Palm Beach County Wall Street South. Um, a lot of people are coming down from New York. They have a really, you know, good understanding of different ways of getting around. And people from out of state are twice as likely to be interested in writing public transit or different things like that than people who already lived here because they've been exposed to it. Right, that makes so much sense. So it's just education. Yeah. Yes, education and then the experience. That's what I love about what you're able to do. So you talked a little bit about uh, helping with transportation and then also working with people on housing and some other initiatives in the city. So you work very closely, obviously, with the Downtown Development Authority. So talk about your partnership with them and what that looks like. So WPB Go, or the, the Mobility Coalition, was really founded by the DDA, the Chamber of the Palm Beaches, and some other community interested, and, and the city and TPA were involved, and some other uh, community interested businesses that include Related, Nora, uh, One Parking is on our, like, uh, in our group, um, where they're all folks like, hey, we're really popular, now we have to deal with the impacts of that. Like, just imagine you're a business, just one business, and you're super popular, like you're a nightclub, and there's a huge line out the door, you have to figure out, like, do we expand our nightclub? Do we come up with another collection or, or a restaurant? Same thing. Um, we have to deal with that at the city scale, right? And so sometimes we just have to do some upgrades to, to keep up with, with that sort of popularity. So those community-minded entities um, help form the organization. And then the executive director of the DDA and the head of the chamber are our two co-chairs. So there is this, just as it exists out there, there's this really close connection between our economic might and our access to it, right? And so we're in, uh, embodying that in what we do. And we're also recognizing that, again, no one entity can do it all by themselves. It's yeah. a public-private partnership. And that by working together, we'll accomplish our best work. Absolutely. So you've got a really great collaboration and, of course, a really wonderful team. And we need a really great team to do this. You have a great team. So do you want to introduce our fun guest today? Oh, fantastic. Well, uh, our first hire at WP Go is Bernard Harrigan. And so he, like me, is, is a, a fellow veteran, but we came to know him during our, our hiring and interview process. Um, FAU grad, worked, uh, did a lot of study in sustainability. And Bernard, welcome aboard. 
Welcome, yeah, so Bernard. Be thank you for being for so thank you both for your service. Uh, I appreciate that. We all do. And thank you for being here. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. So we were talking a little bit earlier before you came on, and you have you you're you have a real passion for this kind of work. I do. Um it's a new passion though, and it's not never too late to start this passion, I guess you can say. Um I went back to school. A little fearful at first, went back to school in, my, in, in the later ages of, of my life. Um, so really wanted to get involved with trying to make a difference. And it started with uh, being involved in a nonprofit that dealt with coral reef restoration. And from there, through school, found my way into sustainability. And this is where I'm at. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Well, we are happy to have you here because anyone who is, we have to have people that are passionate about this kind of work, right? Absolutely. So what are some of the challenges that you see? What are some of the conversations that are being had that you're seeing with the businesses that you're working with, the people downtown? Um, so as the outreach coordinator, um, meeting with these businesses and employers, we have found some of the things that would be most I guess common with them, with them would be the commute to come into the city. And I think everyone can kind of agree to that. Um, just getting into the city is a little bit of a challenge. Um, besides that, I would say maybe it's the parking is another thing that would be uh, of concern. Um, the city is growing and places to actually place your vehicles is becoming a little less uh, apparent, or at least you think that it's less apparent, which is a thing. Um, so I think that the best thing for us to do is to really try to uh, assuage their, their challenges by offering benefits and opportunities that they may not have thought about. And that's what we are essentially trying to do, um, educating. Uh, the, the employers and the employees on some of the benefits that they can take advantage of. Um, like Jonathan may have said, uh, introducing them to ideas that may, maybe wasn't a concept in their mind or a reality. Um, and once they, I guess, take part in that, they will find that it may be actually more beneficial in, in a whole sense than just getting into and from work, so to speak. So with the education piece, because you both had mentioned it, for those that are listening, thinking, okay, I want to know a little bit more about WPB Go. How can I learn more about how I can leverage public transportation to make it easier for me to get, get around downtown? What are some of the things that you're doing that they can take advantage of? Currently right now, we are finalizing our website that will allow them to maybe get that information that they want to look at or maybe entertain trying out for the first time. Um, you're welcome to reach out to me if you want to talk to me with me about this. Uh, just go go double one on one with Bernard. <laughs> right. Just go to go wpbgo.com and you can reach out to me and I'll be more than happy to just kind of help you along the way if you wanted to do something or have questions answered about some of these things. Um, I don't know, Jonathan, do you have any other? Yeah, and then uh, we'll be kicking off our first pilot with a broad cohort of employers um, early next year. We've already been meeting with them and so we can test out. Uh, a bunch of different solutions. Um, that The website that we're standing up allows people to find ways to carpool and vanpool together. And then, like he was mentioning, the email address go at wpbgo.com is someplace you can reach out if you have any sort of questions or want to be involved in the future pilot. But our intent is to be like super, you know, customer focused, right? There's all these different transportation providers and you know, company has the time to think about how do I deal with this problem, but it's it's still causing challenges in their workforce. So our job is to be their transportation experts and to make this kind of like multifaceted system much more customer centric, and that's our job. So anybody who's interested, go at wpbgo.com if, uh, by email. Yeah. Awesome. And you are no stranger to West Palm Beach. You grew up in West Palm Beach. So tell us a little bit about what you've seen over the many years that you've been here. Well, I mean, it Anybody that's been here for a while can tell you it's changed a lot. Um, I grew up here since a, a little tyke, um, a product of the Palm Beach County Schools. A shout out to Palm Beach State College, who got me started on my collegiate uh, level and went through to Florida Atlantic University, and now I'm at Florida State University. But um, right here in the city, it has really blown up in development. I mean, anybody can see it. It's, it's beautiful. The city is wonderful. And I'm really uh, excited about where it's going to be in the next couple of years. Um, but I also understand that we have to really try to get ahead of any kind of potential challenges we may face because we want to make sure that we continue to grow. And, um, you know, from, I used to be a, a mall rat and I used to love going to the, the Palm Beach, like the Palm Beach mall. And now it's like an outlet and there's all kinds of great, great different types of opportunities for you to really experience the city and, and the surrounding areas. And I just want to make sure that people come here and really enjoy it. And the best way to do that is to make sure that those that could come here in a different way can do so uh, without having too many challenges. So, yeah. What would you share with a business owner who's thinking about potentially relocating to West Palm Beach? 
Um, I mean, we are really ahead of a lot of these transit things. So if that's going to be a concern, uh, besides the fact that the weather is great <laughs> <laughs> and you have like great opportunities to be outdoors and just enjoy, I mean, this is like East Coast LA. You got so many different things you can do that is just wonderful. And you can like, I have a kayak, I have kayaks at my house. So I go out to the, right in the water all the time. It's just wonderful. Um, Besides all that, um, we are getting ahead of some of these things. So if you really want to just take advantage of the, the growth that's happening here and also feel like you are um, having initiatives that are coming out to really make it supportive of your business, this is a great place to start it. Um, I can tell you that there was a, a Harvard study that came out, just so you can kind of get, get an idea about some of the things we're thinking about, um, that if an employee were to spend just 15 minutes out of the day, at the end of the day, thinking about their day, whether it's good things or bad things, and do this for a period of three weeks, you will have a 30% increase in product productivity. So can you imagine all of your employees spending time on the bus, just rehashing some of the, maybe the failures or some of the good points about their day and just instead of driving and worrying about the traffic, spending that time just thinking about their day, they'll become much more productive and make your business better. And it's just a one-to-one -one great way to really just promote your own business in a different ma manner. So we're trying to help these businesses understand that and get ahead of all that so look at yeah. that i love that that is a and and yes that is regardless of your transportation i think that's a, a, that's a good tip for everyone to be able to use yeah. to think about your day absolutely um amazing is there anything that we need to know about wpb go that you're like i wish more people knew this our job is to work together and keep you know paying that forward and making our environment better and continue to be a high quality place for people to, to enjoy their time and not get frustrated and going to or from places. So um, that's that's what we're setting about to do. And you know, we're here to work with employers. So any employers that are suddenly interested seeing this and like, well, how can we work together on this as well? Again, write us at go at wpbgo.com um, or come talk to the DDA. Um, we're always here and, and uh, we're happy to move forward on these efforts together. Awesome. I love it. I love the collaboration. I love that you are able to come and share everything that you're doing. So thank you uh, for all that you're doing. Jonathan, thank you so much. Bernard, thank you for being here. We appreciate you. And thank you all for watching. We look forward to seeing you next time.